Let's pray. <laughs> Abba, Father, we praise you. We magnify you for your faithfulness, your goodness to us. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your everlasting Amen. love that you have uh, bestowed on us. Undeserving we are, Lord, you love us eternally. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for being so faithful to cover us each day that we will be faithful and strong to the end. And as we start our Bible study tonight, we just uh, thank you for your mighty presence and your special anointing, especially on Pastor Jay. Thank you, Lord, that you're covering all of us with your precious blood. And as we come to you, Lord, we ask you to cleanse us from all our sins, known and unknown, anything that grieves you. Lord, forgive us and cleanse us again tonight with your word that we will never be the same. Help us to love you more, to humble ourselves daily and uh, allow us, God, to uh, come out of this uh, Bible study never the same and continue to bless everyone uh, we ask you to cover the airwaves we cancel any work of the enemy upon our needs we bind even uh, forgetfulness and uh, we speak life wholeness order clarity uh, soundness and uh, alertness that all the seeds that will be planted will be planted on good soil and reap a bountiful harvest so we thank you, Lord, for all of this. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Father. Oh, thank you, Jesus. You know, one, one of the things really uh, um, is just so wonderful is, you know, how God is and who he is to us. And, uh, when I, I love the song, I know it's it's medio old now, right? I mean, Lenny LeBlanc was like praised. I love that. I love that. Oh, it's, <laughs> it's been a while, but you know, like I tell a lot of people, a lot of these old songs they have such depth to them, True. and um, True. you know, sometimes I remember these songs. I don't even know all the lyrics sometimes but something catches in your spirit when you listen to these songs na mm-hmm. hindi lang siya basta um, you know parang kanta sa radio di ba? hindi lang siya basta yung tumututug lang sa background but there's something na about them that when you sing it uh, when you worship na it's it becomes really a roadway in your heart um mm-hmm. I, th- I think mm-hmm. there's a there's a verse in Psalms that I, I always remember is you know blessed is he in whose heart is the highway to Zion, um, and in that verse you know you know you're blessed when in your heart not the yung yung way in to the presence of God yung there's in your heart you not the yung way in to get before God right so I believe songs are one of the ways that, you know, we can come in to the presence of God and come up to Zion, come up before our Father. And I think that's kind of key to what we're going to be talking about today is on intercession, right? Mm -hmm. On interceding. Mm -hmm. Um, This is interceding, you know, you know, we'll talk about it a little bit more later, but, you know, intercession is is coming before God uh, Mm -hmm. on behalf of someone else. Um, so that's very key, right? Um, so, ah, thank you, Father. You know, to intercede, and you know, one one other thing about that song is that it's it it says, you know, above all, you know, like Christ is above all; He's mm-hmm. above everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, God is above everything, and I think that's that's something we have to remember as intercession is mm-hmm. where God is where we are and what is our position and but really who what is his position that he is above all things he is there right he is up in heaven he's on the throne he's the king of kings he's the lord of lords he's the god of angel armies he's el shaddai he is god almighty right mm-hmm. 
So I think yun yung kailangan natin makita na that's one thing. But um, I wanted to start off yung ito with yung definition of what it means to intercede. And uh, I, I like to go on dictionary.com kasi sometimes, you know, words words have meaning, di ba? May, may, may ibig sabihin lahat ng word, lahat ng salita. Um, pero minsan, you know, natututo tayo kung ano yung ibig sabihin ng isang, ng isang bagay just by kind of by um, impression. You know, we get an impression of a word. We think, oh, ito yung ibig sabihin ng word na yun. Um, and sometimes tama naman yun, sometimes accurate. Pero it's a dictionary, you can see kung ano talaga yung meaning ng word. And sometimes if you go sa dictionary, merong mas mga mas malalim na mga definition or mas accurate na definition of how that word was used or has been used throughout um, throughout history. In fact, sometimes you can look at the dictionary definition and find out where um, the word came from. So here's the dictionary definition of, inter- of in- to intercede. Basically, it's to act or interpose in behalf of someone in difficulty or trouble as by pleading or petition. An example is to intercede with a governor for a condemned man. Uh, it's to attempt to reconcile differences between two people or groups or, uh, or to mediate between two. And then the other one, I actually can't see my enough, is to interpose a veto. So um, by this definition, you can see this is what intercession is about. It's about pleading for somebody. It's coming before someone in authority for somebody else who is who has been condemned. That's the example. So when you have somebody that is in trouble, when you have somebody that is in a bad position, when you have somebody that is really going to be um, condemned. Um, <laughs> and for me, um, I, I'm... Uh, I'm I'm an I'm an attorney. So as an attorney, you know I'm one of the one of the words for an attorney is an advocate, and we'll we'll look at that later too. As an advocate is somebody who pleads on somebody's behalf. You know, as an attorney, you go to court and you plead for somebody on on someone's behalf, and you plead basically you lay out uh, some what's going on with them, right? But this is the definition of intercede. It's somebody who comes between another for on behalf of another to somebody in authority or to reconcile the differences between two people. And in some way, it's like reconciling between you and, my, and a friend, right? Um, I, I'm sure you've all had uh, friends uh, that sometimes, you know, like uh, away sila. Diba? Di sila nagkikita ng ano, eye to eye. They don't see, see eye to eye. Um, meron silang argument between them. Um, I remember one time, you know, I had uh, a friend that was, um, they, they, had, they had a disagreement. Um, and I felt like, you know, I, I should go talk to them. And I talked to one of the, they were both women actually, and they were, um, uh, they were, uh, you know, they were under this woman's ministry. And I, I made sure I talked to the pastor first. I said, hey, you know, I know there's something's going on and I want to kind of talk to both of these ladies and see if I can uh, help them. And I remember uh, talking to one of the, the lady that was kind of overseeing them. And she asked me a question. And she asked me, well, what authority do you have to speak to them? And what authority do you have to speak to somebody um, about what's going on with them? Kumbaga, anong pakailan mo? <laughs> In a sense, right? <laughs> and um, I thought about that. And pinag-isip ako yan. And I, I, and I looked. And I, I knew it wasn't something that um, I wanted just to do on my own. But I knew that it was something that God, you know, uh, it, uh, seeing my two friends be in this situation is, is, is hard for me. It's difficult for me. So it's not just about difficult for me, but I feel that it's wrong for the body of Christ. 
na these are two sisters in in Christ uh, and they're not in agreement um, so I knew in, in which so when she asked me that what what authority do you have I said um, well you know one is I'm their friend right and as a friend we're all friends and how can we have fellowship with, with each other kung merong ganitong ano uh, you know uh, away or, or misunderstanding right how can we come into the presence of God how can we go into the presence of God when uh, there's something going on and I don't you don't I don't necessarily think that you have to have a special authority in that sense. I mm-hmm. think sometimes you just need to see that there's an issue and there's a problem. And sometimes when God shows you something, you also have to ask God, God, what do I need to do about this? Mm-hmm. And what's my responsibility here? Um, I rem- <clears throat> you remember, you know, of course, the story of Cain and Abel, right? And G- God came to Cain and says, where's your brother? And Cain said, am I my brother's keeper? And the answer to that, of course, is yes, you are your brother's <laughs> keeper, right? We're supposed to watch out for one another. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, whether it's between two people or groups, you know, somebody who intercedes is somebody who comes between <clears throat> two different parties to try to reconcile them. It's either between you and God, uh, between, you know, uh, one person and God, or even one person, even in, within the church, right? Somebody who intercedes is somebody who comes in between and, and makes that difference and tries to reconcile things, tries to, um, to petition, make a petition. Hey, come on, your brother and sister or your sisters, and you should, uh, you should stay together, right? So this one, you know, uh, one of the key verses for me when I thought about this and, and you know, mom, you know, was telling me, oh, you're talking about intercession and receding. And I'm sure you're all familiar with Ezekiel 22.30. And this is God saying, So I sought for a man among them who would make a wall and stand in the gap before me on behalf of the land that I should not destroy it, but found no one. This is God looking for someone who would stand in the gap. And if, 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 if looking at it from God's perspective, he, he saw the land and he saw that there was sin. And his righteousness and his justice demanded that there should be justice and that the land should be destroyed. The people would Mm -hmm. be destroyed. But God was looking for somebody who would stand in the gap, who would make up the hedge in a sense and come between God that he should be convinced not to destroy it. And one one of the things I was thinking about is, well, why does God have to look for a man? Why is God looking for a man? Why, is, why does God need a man to go in? I mean, it's like Jonah. You know, Jonah was saying, God, you know, I didn't want to go to Nineveh because, you know, alam ko naman, you're a good, merciful God and you're going to forgive them, right? Um, but yet <laughs> God still needed Jonah to go to Nineveh to preach to them repentance. He, he, that was part of what he was doing. He was going into Nineveh to tell them, hey, you're going to get destroyed unless you repent. Right, that was part of the intercession that God needed to happen. That was part of what God wanted to to do. Mm-hmm. Um, but why does God need somebody? Right? Why can't God just because He's God, He can do whatever He wants? The earth is the True. Lord's and the fullness thereof. Right? True. He has all authority. He can do whatever He wants. Mm-hmm. Um, and as I was thinking about this, you know, I remembered what it says in Genesis. Right, that in the book of Genesis, when God came and created man, he gave him all authority over all the earth. He delegated to man the authority here on the earth. And as we know, when Adam sinned, he, he let go of that authority. And, and, you know, that's where the prince of this world came and was able to, you know, usurp that authority. But that's because, you know, God put man on this earth and he put on us the responsibility for this earth so mm-hmm. that's why god you know still looks for a man because dunya delegate yung authority bigay niya sa atin yung authority so i think you know looking at this first so i sought for a man among them who would make up a wall you know god's looking for each one of us and 
I, I think that's, you know, one of the key things, you know, who can stand. And like in my example, Tanina, about, you know, me and my two friends, like who, who can stand? Who, you know, who will stand between the two of them? Who will stand between, uh, you know, somebody who's lost and dying and God, right? And God's looking for somebody. And I think sometimes it comes in through relationship, right? Like with me and my friend, what is your relationship to that person? You know, oftentimes we hear about, you know, intercession and we think about who are, who are you praying for? Are you praying for your loved one? Are you praying for the lost sheep, right? The one, you know, the prodigal mm-hmm. son, so to speak, right? But I sought for a man among them. And I think that's one of the key, key things that we need to remember. God's looking for you and me, right? And we're going to go through some of these verses pretty quickly, Um but, you know, if you have your Bible with you, you know, follow along on your own Bible. Look at it, you know, for yourself. I, I know it's on the screen, but there's something about looking at it on your, in your own Bible and then reading it and marking it and marking that word in, your, in the scripture so that you can, you can go back to it later on. And perhaps you already know these verses. Um, in Isaiah 41, 28, you know, God saying, for I looked, I looked. And there was no man. I looked among them, but there was no counselor who, when I asked them, could answer a word. And, you know, there's, of course, a different context uh, to this verse than the other one that we just read in Ezekiel. But, and you can read the whole chapter, but God looks for someone. God's looking for somebody, somebody who is a counselor, somebody who could answer. Um, And answer for whom? Answer on behalf of those that, you know, God wants to judge. Right. Or God has to judge because he's a God of justice. Um, Feel free to ask questions and to stop if you want to discuss some things. But I'm just kind of going to go through some things here. Um, But again, feel free to interrupt if if you have something that you want to add or ask. But Isaiah 41, 28, I looked and there was no man. And I think that sometimes is we have to even ask ourselves now, you know, is God, God, I think God is still looking for, for, for a man. God still looks. And um, it, Hebrews seven twenty five. Therefore, he is also able to save to the uttermost, those who come to God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. And this verse is, all, of course, talking about Jesus, right? that he ever lives to make intercession for them. He's always interceding for us. He's still up in heaven. He, he died. He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and he's seated at the throne of God, at the right hand of the Father. And he ever lives to make intercession for us. Mm-hmm. I think this is one of the key, thing, key verses for intercession, that even though now Christ, Jesus, is still interceding for us. He's, he hasn't stopped. He's still praying for us. And yeah. you just, if you, you know, I mean, pagisipan lang natin yan for a little bit. Jesus is seated on the throne. He already died. He already laid down his life. He poured out his blood on the earth. He, he was crucified. And he rose from the dead. He, he made, he spoiled principalities and powers. He took the keys of hell and, you know, he, 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 he triumphed over them, but then he's up in heaven and he's still praying. He's still interceding. And, you know, you know, when Jesus was at, you know, in the last supper, he told them, you know, I won't drink of this cup again until, you know, every, until everybody comes back, comes into heaven, I guess, so, you know, paraphrase. Um, but he's still interceding. He's still working. He's not done. He's still standing in the gap. He's still, you know, in between us and, um, and, and God. And he's still reconciling us to God. Mm. So, so he's, he always lives to make intercession for them. He's, he's not stopped. And, you know, just thinking about that, God has, Jesus hasn't stopped. He's still going forward, right? Amen. One of the, my favorite verses is when Jesus was, you know, getting ready to go. Uh, John 14, 15, 16, right? He was, he was about to go 
and he knew where he was headed. He knew that he was going to be crucified. But he was talking to his disciples, and he said, I will ask the Father, and he will give you another comforter, counselor, helper, intercessor, advocate, strengthener, and standby, that he may remain with you forever. And, of course, we know that he's talking about the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. That the Holy Spirit is counselor, helper, intercessor, advocate. I mean, those... We we talked about some of these words earlier. I mean, in Hebrew seven twenty five, you know, uh, sorry, in Isaiah it talks about you know I look for a counselor, I look for a man, you know, and Jesus is you know still interceding for us. And I talked about being an advocate as an attorney, right? But he said, "I will ask the Father, and He will give you another Comforter." And this is Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is the counselor. He's Amen. the helper. And he's the intercessor. He's the advocate. He's the one who, who, who stands on our behalf as well. He mm-hmm. intercedes on us on our behalf as well. He's the strengthener and the standby. He strengthens us. He encourages us to say, hey, look, I got you. I'm interceding for you. I'm standing on your behalf. I'm pleading your case. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and this is the work of the Holy Spirit, right? Mm-hmm. If you look at Romans 8, 26, and, you know, I mean, Romans 8 is just uh, an amazing chapter. Now, it's so full. You could probably be in Romans 8 for months and, and, and still be, you know, getting, getting it. Um, but Romans 8, it talks about, likewise, the Spirit also helps our weaknesses. For we don't know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now, he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the spirit is because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. So the Holy Spirit even takes a hold together with us, you know, um, early in the verse. He makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And I think this is the work of the Holy Spirit in us that, you know, he is interceding for us, but he also intercedes through us. Um, What are you seeing in the earth? What are you seeing in your community? What are you seeing all around you? Um, One recent example here for us in the U.S. is that um, we recently overturned Roe versus Wade. Roe versus Wade is a um, is a case that happened in you know uh, in the early seventies, which basically legalized abortion. Um, you know, just in simple terms, you know, it legalized abortion. And for nearly 50 years, you know, because abortion has been legal, legal, they estimate probably about 64 million babies have been aborted. It's been aborted. Oh, my gosh. 64 million. I mean, think about that number. If you started counting one, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. If you keep counting to sixty four million, it would take forever. But we know that every life, every child, every baby is a life that God created and God had a purpose for that was killed, that was basically slaughtered, right? But you can't even count that high. How long would that take? Hmm. But think about that. Every life has Hmm. meaning. Every life to God is precious. Every person, and that's a person, right? It's easy to to lose that in a number of 64 million. <clears throat> and you can say that that's a lot. But uh, you know what? Each person, each each one is a is is God created. And so, you know. <sighs> For nearly 50 years. But our fight's not done. So recently the Supreme Court over, overruled 
basically they made a judgment to say that you know no that that law was um an error and that should be corrected mm. so that's amazing and, and that's a really big step but you know what there were people that have been praying and praying and interceding and asking to for god to move to tur- to turn the tide to Amen. change to change things <clears throat> Amen. um and you know i don't understand all the ways of god and i don't think we all do but you know you know um we had president trump uh in office and i think he was key i mean i i i i'm not gonna say he was anointed or whatever but i i believe that god worked it so that he was able to put three justices on the supreme court um and in that process that and each pro, each step in that way was fought mm. for fought against right <clears throat> but when he was able to put the right justices on the supreme court or other justices on the supreme court whether you agree with them or not they were able to overturn a law that was put in 50 years ago but it wasn't just that the three justices were there but it was also the right case that came before the supreme court that they had to judge and adjudicate mm-hmm. um but imagine think about all the prayers in the last 50 years think about all the people that have been praying and interceding that have been asking and seeking god and you know the bowls of heaven are filled with the prayers and the alms of of, of his people that when we pray you know it's up there until god is you know it's until it's full i think Amen. right but the holy spirit <clears throat> makes intercession for us and sometimes you may not know or see the result of your prayer but right. sometimes you may not even understand what you're praying for mm-hmm. but you know with groaning and you know what is what is a groan i mean think about it what is a groan when you um when you look at somebody or when you're when you're sick or when you're in pain you just ah uh, you just uh you just you, there's this groan that comes when you're in pain even when you're moving uh you know, you know if you have like a back pain you're standing up and uh, hmm. it's just something uh, the, a release that comes out of your body it's like uh, it's a breath out of your mouth it's with a sound it's uh you know and that's that's a groan and sometimes you know the groaning is continuous because the pain is continuous mm. and i think that's one of the things that we we don't get when we intercede sometimes and when we pray is that we lack that feeling we lack the pain or and it's not about being emotional but it's about being pained in your heart because you see what's going on I mean I gave you that example about abortion and that's not you know uh you know just a simple that's not uh, it's hard not to to feel that pain right it's not hard it's hard it's easy to be desensitized right to take the oh mm-hmm. you know well you know wala ka namang magagawa ganyan talaga ang buhay may you know may mayaman may mahirap may nag ano is like, parang kanta sa anak diba uh pero you know it's it's easy not to be pained it's easy to be numb you know mm. kasi masyado na you know if you think about it you it's, it's just too hard but i think you know god wants us to to feel what others are feeling. God wants us to know the pain that they're going through. God wants us to empathize. You know, the Bible talks about Jesus, you know. He knew our pains. He took our pain and he took our weaknesses. He took our our, our hurts, right? Mm. But he 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 felt it. He knew what it was like to be us he knew what it was like for us to go through what we needed to go through and yet he still took that on for himself and i think sometimes this is what's lacking in intercession because intercession is not just supposed to be uh uh how do you say this it's not supposed to be just a transaction 
you know, it's not like going to the bank, putting in your passbook or your ATM and then getting money out. It's not supposed to be that way. Uh, intercession is, is from your heart. And sometimes it's brought about by pain and by suffering, either your own or other people's. But because you recognize the pain and the suffering of other people, there's a groaning. There's, a, there's something that's being released out of your mouth. And you can't even say the words, but just God help. Yeah. You know? Right. But it's 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 a heartfelt thing, right? It's mm-hmm. it's deep in your heart. <laughs> um, but that's what the Holy Spirit is is working in us. You know, he's he's he knows what every person is going through. He knows what this person needs. He knows what that person is how they're suffering. When you see somebody in pain because they're sick uh, with cancer. And, and you know how hard it is for them to, you see, you may see it, you, you know, especially when you see it when, when it's a family member, right? And you're more right there. You, you, that's, I think, one of the key things to, to intercession is that you see what other people are going through, right? You see that you feel their pain, right? So Romans 8.34 in the same chapter, and I just wanted to point this out. In the same chapter, it says, who is he who condemns? It's Christ who died and furthermore is also risen, who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. Think about this. You have Holy Spirit interceding on our behalf, who knows the mind of Christ. And then you have Christ who's at the right hand of God, also interceding for us. I mean, this is such a, you know, I think I, I've heard, you know, a conversation, or, you know, just a discussion. It's like, you know, oh, is there even a, uh, you know, we have, you know, that you have the gifts, you have the apostle, prophet, pastor, teacher, evangelist, right? There's fivefold ministry. Well, is there like a, a like a, a ministry for intercession or a, a position for intercessor? Or, and you may not find one in the Bible. I don't think there is one. But we know that this is what God does. This is what Jesus does. He intercedes. This is what the Holy Spirit does. He intercedes. And Romans 8, just, we just looked at it. You know, intercession is, is you know, he, he intercedes through us with groanings. So it's not necessarily that you have to be called to be a pastor, mm-hmm. uh, uh, evangelist. You know, in the same way that you, it's not necessarily that you have to be called intercessor to intercede. But if this is, you know, I mean, if you look at Romans 8, it says, you know, you know, for, you know as for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God, right? And this is what we're called to as sons. <clears throat> Amen. If you look at J- James 5.16, I think this is one of, yeah, I'm sure... Every, you've all seen this verse in the Amplified. It's confess to one another. Therefore, your faults, your slips, your false steps, your offenses, your sins, and pray also for one another. And this is given to the church. This is not given to just, you know, the co- people that are called to ministry or people that are called to one thing or another. But it's, you know, pray that one another, that you may be healed and restored mm. to a spiritual tone of mind and heart. And this is where, you know, where I wanted to, to, to highlight this portion of the Bible. This is the earnest, heartfelt, continued prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available, dynamic in its work, working. And, you know, these heartfelt prayers, I mean, what's heartfelt to you, right? What breaks your heart? What? motivates you you know a while ago i had a dream um and in this dream i was like in in a wilderness area out of the way kind of like a desert road um by a cliff uh and and um there was a uh a guy in a motorcycle that had an accident and he was lying on the ground 
And I went to the man to help him. And I took off his helmet. Um, and the man was hurt and dying or dying, or I'm not sure if he was dead or not. But when I looked and I took off his helmet, I saw the face of my son. And in that dream, I just began to weep. And it was just like, oh, oh my gosh, it's my son. And I just started weeping and I was like, Lord. And, you know, of course, praying for him, oh, Lord, please don't let anything happen to my kids. Mm -hmm. But at that moment, you know, after that dream, I was thinking about that dream. I was looking at that dream and, and God was showing me, do you think about how you reacted and how you wept and how your heart broke and how you cried out to me when you saw that it was your son that was hurt and dying? Mm. And he, and he said, that's how I want you to intercede for others. Because mm. it has to be personal. Mm. It has to be heartfelt. It can't just be going through your list and say, Lord, I pray for this person. I pray for that person. And there's nothing, you know, of course, mm -hmm. you, can, you can do that. Mm -hmm. But it's this earnest. It comes from the bottom of your heart, and it's hard. You know, you feel it with you. You your your whole body is into it. Your it's just your whole mind. You're focused into it, right? I mean, what if I was interceding for you, and then I got myself on us like looking on browsing on Facebook or whatever? Is that intercession? Is that is that, are, can you be so distracted? Can you be doing, you know, multitasking and doing this and doing that? Or is your heart bowed before God and just like, Lord, when you're interceding for somebody, you're like giving everything to him, right? It's that earnestness. It's that, it's just, you're so focused on this one thing, but you bring your emotion into it. And that's hard because, well, well, it's not hard in the sense that it's it's impossible mm -hmm. to do or, or hard to difficult to do. But it's it's hard because you feel, you empathize, you sympathize, you you're right there. But like in that example, I was telling you with you know with my son, it's like in that dream, it's like you're almost without words, but you just. Mm -hmm let out a sigh or a, a groan. It's like, Lord, to cry out to God. It just, oh. And, you know, it's easy to weep. It's easy to cry because, you know, Lord, they need you. Lord, we need you. I need you to move. I need you to do something. And it's not just, um, it's not just, Just gotta, just, Father, help us. Help us. Help us, Lord. Amen. It has to be this prayers, this intercession it has to be more than just a checklist. It has to be more than just setting aside time. But it's like coming before the Lord, coming before God and coming into his presence, coming before the throne and being mm -hmm. at the throne, just as Jesus is at the throne, interceding. You know, <laughs> I understand, I understand there's this 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 prayer of faith where you say, Oh Lord, I pray this, and you know, I'm not gonna be moved by that or whatever. But, the prayer of faith, right? Mm -hmm. Where you stand in faith and you declare 
And that's good too. You know, we need that too. There's there's so many kinds of prayer, but in inter, in intercession, you know, the, the Bible talks in Hebrews about Jesus, who in the days of his flesh cried out mm. with strong crying and tears. Amen. Right, strong crying and tears. Amen. And yet, sometimes we're not even moved to tears because it's. We're numb or we're, we're desensitized or we don't really sympathize or feel. You know, God gave you your feelings. God gave you these emotions. And there's godly, holy, there are godly, holy emotions that rise up, you know, that cry out for justice, that cry out for mercy, that cry out for, oh, Lord, help mm -hmm. me, help this person, right? Amen. But it's that heartfelt prayer. It's a, it's a, it's not a token prayer, of course, and not to say that people do that all the time. But it's easy, it's easier to just okay. Well, I did my my responsibility as a Christian. I gave the word, or I, I said the words before God, mm. and to miss the heart of God, because it's his. It's really, it really is his heart, right? If you go back yeah. to Romans 8, you know, the Holy Spirit knows what the mind of God is, what the will of God is. And that's what we're doing when we're interceding. We're, we're, we're praying the will of God. Amen. In Ephesians 6, right, it says, pray at all times, on every occasion, in every season, mm. in the Spirit, with all manner of prayer and entreaty. There's different kinds of prayer. Yeah, we know that. But to that end, keep alert and watch with strong purpose and perseverance, interceding in behalf of all the saints. Uh, this is, you know, Ephesians 6, we know is, you know, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and all that, right? So put on the full armor of God, the breastplate of righteousness, gird your loins with truth. Your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Put on the helmet of salvation. Pick up the shield of faith, sword of the spirit. And then pray at all times, on every occasion, in every season. And, you know, I just want to say, you know, Jesus also said, don't pray with vain repetitions. Don't pray with just, da -da 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 -da, just repeating things over and over again. Don't pray that way. And he wasn't saying that you can't repeat something. But don't be vain. In your repetition. Don't just make it. Uh, well go. I pray for this guy. I pray for that guy. I pray for this guy. You know. It's just. You're just repeating it. You're thinking that. Because you say it a lot. Mm -hmm. That it's going to be. That it's going to work. It's going to. It's not the number of times you say it. It's not the number. You know. It's how, not how often you repeat it. And that's what Jesus was saying. You know. But pray. In this way. Our father. Who are in heaven, hallowed be your name, Lord. And that's why that's why we started up with above all, right? Hallowed be your name, because you're above all things, God. You're above Amen. all the earth. Hallowed be thy name. You know, pray at all times. But in this verse, you know, it's you've got to keep alert and you gotta watch with strong purpose. You gotta see. And sometimes it's, they say, well, you know, it's easy to see the problems in the world. But you know what? Not, not really. You have to really watch and you have to be alert. You need to know the movement of the enemy. You need to know the steps that the enemy is, the strategy that the enemy is going. It's not just that the enemy is coming at you, but what are they planning? And what is their purpose? Right, because we know that there are enemies all around. There's enemies, you know, that are coming to attack them. But it's the watchman on the wall. It's the person that keeps alert and is watching, and is interested. Then is you know, with that purpose and perseverance, they don't stop. <laughs> you don't stop, and you don't just repeat yourself. But you keep on with purposefulness, and that's what Jesus was saying. You know, with you know, don't pray with vain repetitions, but you pray mm -hmm. with purpose. You pray with aim. You pray coming into that secret place and, or in the presence of God. And you have, you bring this, this 
readiness to God, let's do what let's do. do I'm going to hear to do what you want me to do. Mm-hmm. I'm going to intercede. I'm going to stand on behalf of my brothers and sisters. I'm going to stand on behalf of the church. I'm going to stand on behalf of the lost. Right. But interceding on behalf of all the saints. You know, there are many churches on the earth. There are many, many, you know, different parts of the body of Christ. And not everybody has the same seeing or has, has the same understanding or even teach the same thing. Uh, but it's easy to point the finger and say, well, that person's, you know, wrong about this or that person's wrong about that. That person's missing this. That person, that song isn't quite right or that whatever. And it's easy to point that out. But that's not what God is calling us to do. He's calling us to intercede for one another, intercede for that church, intercede for that pastor that's going through something, intercede mm-hmm. for that ministry that's, you know, that, that maybe is an error about something, but pray for them, pray for them that they would walk in the righteousness of God, that they would walk in the truth, that they would walk in accuracy and in the spirit. And it's, it's not just to, not just to point things out. It's easy to see, mm-hmm. but it's, you know, there's the other part of, you know, really seeing what God's, how God sees it and interceding on their behalf. Because we can't just see with our own natural eyes and we, we can't just judge according to uh, what we see in the natural. But we have to look with the eyes of God and God, what are you seeing here? What are you saying to us here? And this verse is just. We all know this verse. We could probably recite it in our sleep, in, in, in you know, whatever, right? But God so loved the world. And you know what? We talked about Jesus interceding on our behalf. We talked about Holy Spirit, now who will be with us forever to intercede. But Father God also acted on our behalf when he sent his son to redeem us, to rescue us. So, you know, you know, where, where's that verse where it says, you know, I look for a man and found no one. So I did it is what God was saying, right? I took, I took, I took, I took care of it because I couldn't find anybody. So a lot of things there, you know, I'm sorry, uh, you know, a lot of things to unpack, but when we pray for somebody, and this is kind of like just, mm-hmm. the, I guess, the steps, right? You know, you lay out your argument before God. You say that, you know, God, we've sinned. But Jesus paid the price on the cross. He's redeemed us by his blood. Mm-hmm. We have forgiveness and redemption through him. And I, I put this down here, but even as I think about this, I know <laughs> that this cannot just be, again, like a transaction, like a bank transaction. I mean, you've watched these lawyers on uh, on TV or, or, or movies, right, where they give an, uh, a passionate plea to the jury or to the judge to argue their case for why their client should be acquitted, right? Uh, he's not guilty, right? And you see the passion... That, you know, they show in movies sometimes. It's not always like that on TV or in real life. But but when somebody is advocating for somebody and, and they really feel it, you can sense that, you know, the, the, the argument is stronger, not just because of the, the arguments that are laid out or, you know, kung ano yung mga ras- rationale or reasons na binibigay. Pero dahil may passion yung taong nagsasalita. Right, but in in our case, we don't say that these person that this person is not guilty. We don't say that this person, you know, is is uh, should be acquitted um, of of any blame. We say no. They've been. They have sinned. We have sinned. But the price has already been paid. Jesus went to the cross. He died for our sins, right? And, you know, whatever it is that God would have you intercede, whatever it is that God would have you do. You know, I love this verse here in Isaiah 58 because I think it, it's 
who it talks about Jesus, of course, is he's the repairer of the breach. He's the restorer of streets to dwell in. And he's the one who makes up the gap. Mm-hmm. And he has, he has done that. But you know what? Here's the thing. Jesus said, I am the head of the church. And the church is my body. You and I were called to be the body of Christ. And we are seated together. We are seated together. We're seated together in the heavenly places with Christ Jesus. That means as Jesus is interceding on the, at the right hand of the Father, we're seated together with him. And that's <clears throat> our place too. That's what we should be doing as well. We'll be interceding in the same mm-hmm. breath, in the same place. Right? So that's uh, quite a lot uh, mm-hmm. to think about. And, uh, you know, mm-hmm. you can, of course, uh, have, if you have any, anything you want to talk about or, or you want to discuss, we can talk about more. But really, I just know that, you know, this is, it's got to be, intercession just cannot be something that is, disassociated and try to look for the right words you know it, it has to be with all our heart and uh, with with all our participation and that we're doing it really because that's what God has asked us to do and because that's what he's doing amen yeah, um, a while, when we started, um, Sister Trixie was saying about many of us, when we started this kind of like felt uh, attacks, like, you know, not just me, um, many of us. Um, uh, but honestly, during these times that I have this allergy and all, um, at first, you know, there was the battle in my mind, like, no, this is not mine. I will not accept this. This is not mine, but I'm feeling it. Let's like, you know, when 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 I have like how many days? Three, four, five days that I cannot sleep at night, and then have to work early the following morning. Uh, I was just praying, and uh, and part of it was just fighting against what I have in my mind, like you know, I'm sick. Uh, then I said, no, I'm not sick. You know, <laughs> that kind of thing that you have to fight through. But um, I, I just believe that, you know, somehow God would allow us to experience something because he wants to remind us that, you know, but one of the things that God reminded me was that, oh my gosh, I was, I was praying one time, I was kneeling down, I was like crying because the pain was just like, you know, um, uh, well, it's only in the head that's, that the pain was just terrible. And so I was crying, I was weeping, I was praying to God, Lord, what, what's going on? And then I started saying, Lord, I know you'll heal me. And then, you know, on the other hand, in the other mind, you know, would saying like, oh, that's nothing as what Jesus experienced on the cross. Well, Lord, but that was you. But I was saying like, okay, you know, it's a reminder. It's a reminder um, because we have committed ourselves to to be in this, to be trained uh, uh, and go into it again. Um, so yeah, yeah. it's it's. I'm I'm happy. I'm glad that it's kind of over uh, now. I mean, like, natanggal yung mga ano ano. Wala na yung mga maga maga. I mean, talagang na maga yan and. Um, and I was saying that you know it's the attack was really frontal you know when you face somebody they will always look at your face you know when somebody talks to you they don't look at anywhere they will look at your face and that's where the attack was he would attack in our face in in, in the face of you know uh, yung face natin yung face yung face niya yun lagi yung unang unang Tinitira. Um, and so am I better than anybody? No, I'm not. Uh, 
I'm just reminded of how it is to come to the presence of God. And I realized a few weeks, after a week, I realized I have the shofar and um, um, I blew the shofar and then I pray again. And then I remember it has an anointing oil from Jerusalem, from Israel. It goes with the anointing oil. So I took it. I asked Josie to, to anoint me with the oil. And then, then, you know, I began to feel the, uh, the release. Um, now I, I still feel that, you know, if I would touch this, so some, you know, like parang dust. Yeah, pag naligo ako, pag ginanon ko yan, matatanggal siya. Um, tapos parang nanibago nga yung, 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 yung face. Uh, but God is reminding me that, yeah, reminding us of our place. And thank, thanks, Jay. I mean, you know, Pastor Jay is now pastoring and, you know, we have a lot of times that we were together, a lot of the things that we, she was mm-hmm. talking about, rebuking and correcting and all the stuff. We went through that. But somehow there was a time that parang nag, ano yung heart ko, parang tumigas. <laughs> na lagi na lang yung parang ganun. Lagi na lang yung mali. <laughs> lagi na lang yung ganun. <laughs> yeah, I think one of the things, Alan, is, you know, um, r- remaining tender, you know, yung, yung keeping that heart brokenness. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I don't know, I think I think there was a one time, you know, one of the pastors I knew was saying, you know, yung mga intercessors laging umiiyak, laging parang masama loob or whatever. And I'm like, you know, actually. I, I kind of have a lot of joy. So, <laughs> you know, I have joy. And I think even though there are, of course, there are times that when you're in prayer, you're not, you know, you, you, you empathize, you, you, you feel the emotion, you, you, you cry or weep or whatever. But quite frankly, when you come out, there's joy. And you know it talks about in Hebrew seven, right? About you know you know he, you know God Jesus, uh, you know he he cried out with strong crying and tears to him who was always able to save him, right? And he ever lives to make intercession. But it also says in Hebrews that you know how God anointed him with joy mm-hmm. above mm-hmm. all his fellows. So this is just one part of it. I mean, sometimes you feel your emotion of. And you you weep and cry before the Lord, but really there's such a joy afterwards because you know that's the fruit of the spirit. There's the fruit of you know that's the fruit of when you're groaning in the spirit or you're praying in the spirit, like what we read in Ephesians six, right? Praying always in the spirit uh, with all manner of prayer and supplication, right? Uh, but when you pray in the spirit, one, it's also you know. Well, you, you, of course, you know, Jude 20, right? Where you pray, praying in the spirit, you know, building yourself up in your most up. holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, praying in the spirit, keeping yourself in the love of God. And I think the bottom line is, you know, that love that God has for people is how, is, is what we carry, is what we bring. When we, when we walk in that love, when we, when we nurture that love, when we let that love grow within us, you know, that affection. And it's, mm-hmm. it's, it's not just, again, it's love is not just a feeling, but it's that love, it's that affection, it's that I'm willing to lay down my life for you, mm-hmm. right? Um, and I think that's where the, the, the prayer should come from that place of because you love people. Because you love, you love them. You care about them, and that, 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 like that dream I was telling you about with my son. Because I love my son, mm-hmm. you know, I can pray from that place. But you can take that, and 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 pray from that place for other people too. Because you realize that's the heart of a father for a son, right? How would Father God? How does Father feel about his children um, suffering? being sick you know and god is not you know god doesn't 
cause you to suffer or, or afflict you with sickness. But, you know, but God, God is a good father. And, you know, we need to recognize that, that his heart is for your healing. His heart is for your redemption. His heart is for your salvation, not just for you and I, but for other people. Mm -hmm. So out of that place of love and fatherhood uh, or motherhood, that's where we pray, right? Yeah, what, 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 um, like what's going on now is that um, the danger of putting the word, the, you know, intercessor, I am like that when we began to say I am an intercessor. Uh, one of the things that God reminded me is that I am only an intercessor if I will intercede. Or when you intercede, uh, right? When I intercede. When you intercede. See, if I don't, if I don't intercede, I'm not an intercessor. And that that's what that, that's so clear. Uh, okay, so wala yung wala yung form. Now you have to be called you are, because I am an intercessor. I have to pray. I have to intercede. No, if when I intercede, then that's when I am an intercessor. And uh, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, the, the, Jesus is an intercessor because he, for, he, he, he's interceding. So every time he is an intercessor. Yeah. So sometimes, yeah. you know, we, we, we tend to, to put that and become, you know, you, you embrace that as like, oh, it's my ministry. So, so because it's your ministry, it works. No, I don't think that way. I mean, it's because we pray that, you know, when I say when we pray, when we intercede, uh, the things happen. When we connect God, us, and the person or the situation that we are praying to. And, and I think, you know, keying at is, is knowing that it's reconciling with God and man mm -hmm. uh, and being in between. Um, right. Trix, yes. Trix, Trixie, did you have anything you wanted to add or say? Yeah, I was moved by uh, your um, the heartfelt the message that you were saying that you cannot pray if it's not uh, really heartfelt. And oftentimes we don't uh, experience that emotion being of having a heartfelt, uh, you know, when people say, can you pray for me? I, I have this, I have that. Uh, and when you come, it's hard, you know, you, you have to condition your mind, your, your whole being. And for one to do that, it's really a lot of um, dying to self, a lot of sacrifice. And the common uh, person is often full of self problems, self uh, needs. Mm -hmm. And um, that's why it's hard to pray because the first thing you think of is yourself. How can I pray for others when I have all of these things that I need for myself to solve? Right. So how do we correct that? Um, I was uh, reflecting on, you know, um, uh, a message that I was sharing to, a Bible, to our Bible study. And it's about uh, what Abraham Maslow said, that there is a hierarchy of needs of people. Unless those needs on the bottom are met, it's, it's hard to go up. And the highest uh, needs of a person, aside from food, shelter, clothing, security, is the need to be loved, appreciated, accepted, celebrated. No? That's why uh, this is how man is created. It's a basic need. Uh, that's what the psychologist was saying. That's why we fall into the loss of the eyes, the loss of the flesh, the pride of life, because man has this nature that we are thinking about ourselves no yung uh, what's my worth 
no what's what's in for what what is uh, in for me if i do this you know anong kapalit ano ano makukuha ko and um i was uh, thinking how is this really the way we should live our life yung you know we should aim to be loved we should aim to be appreciated we should aim to be celebrated we should aim to be uh, you know yung uh, yung yung parang tinataas tayo but when i meditate recognize. on that uh, yeah recognize accepted kasi ito yung you know ito yung pinaka root ng pride you no know? pride is really uh, an awareness that we want to be loved we want to be appreciated we want to be celebrated and accepted and the way we do it is you know we think highly of ourselves no we we tend to uh, we want worship we want uh, praises we want thanks we want to have the best so that people can applaud us and uh, the the word of god says pride goes before destruction and uh, humility comes before honor so i was thinking about uh, what was the attitude of the lord that he was able to you know die sacrifice you know intercede it was really parang i i see it's a loss of self in you know the the you, you lose your your love for self you lose your need to be appreciated you you lose yourself to be uh you know uh to have worth yung kumbaga you lose your worth and and maybe this is why god said um whoever wants to uh gain his Follow life me. must lose lose it who wants to uh, whoever gains his life here will lose the other life so um this is hard, hard this is a hard realization but you know the only way we go up in god's kingdom is we go down you know the less uh, the less of us the more of christ the more we can do his will and for us to pray it's a lot of dying you know dying to uh, our our needs dying to our needs so it's uh, not kumaga you have to put yourself in that parang framework you know why am i going to pray why should Tri- i yeah you know Trixie, I, I, i i hear what you're saying and one of the things that it came to me as you were talking about that was of course you know galatians 2:20 i'm crucified with christ right mm-hmm. but in first john mm-hmm. it, it talks about i think in chapter 3 it talks about you know um it's made clear who take their nature from god mm-hmm. and are his children mm-hmm. and who take their nature from the devil and are his children mm-hmm. and i think that's one of the key things that needs to be a revelation to us is that you have the mind of christ mm-hmm. you have the nature of god it's we are born again of the spirit of god we have the spirit of god in us Amen. that we're no longer uh to walk the way the world walks and the, of course we still renew our we still have to renew our mind we have to but we have to renew our mind according to his word mm-hmm. and realize that i have the nature of god in me that i don't have to walk in selfishness i don't have mm-hmm. to walk in the lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes i can walk by the spirit of god. and that's why romans 8 you know as many as are led by the spirit of god these are the sons of god and you and i are we're children of god and so we have now this new nature behold old things are passed away behold all things have become new so we don't have to walk in the oh i i got a you know i'm not dying anymore I'm dead. Mm-hmm. I died. I am crucified. It's it's in the mm-hmm. past tense. I died with Christ. Therefore, when that thing wants to rise up in me, I can say no, that's dead. 
It's already been crucified. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, though not I, but Christ lives in me. And, you know, it's, again, this is the spirit of God in you. The spirit of a God in you will rise up. And that's why it has to, you know, click in that revelation of like, yes, that's right. I died. That's not me any longer. Uh, but right. I, I take my nature from God. Mm-hmm. I take my nature from God. And God is a God of love. God is, 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 is so I love my brethren. I'm not thinking about myself because I myself is dead. Mm-hmm. I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus. So that's one of the things I constantly I have to remind myself the word of God. It's like, you know what? This is who I am. Mm-hmm. I think, uh, um, I, can I call on maybe Pastor Art and Nora? Uh, if you have anything you want to add or say? Uh, I'm just thinking if, if, the, <clears throat> if the person is in a position to intercede, if he's going to a certain issues like in hell. I just want to <clears throat> to be sure about it. <clears throat> if you're going certain issue, are you in a position to intercede? So that's what I'm thinking about. <clears throat> that's 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 a good thought. I mean, really, I, I think one is we got to remember when, when Jesus told us, this is how you should pray, our Father. And that's the position that we're in. That's our identity. We are his sons and daughters. He's our Father. Mm-hmm. And I'll tell you this, no matter how, no matter how my children may act or behave, they may fail, they may do good, whatever, whether they're doing good or doing bad, they're still my children and I don't shut them out. I never close the door on them. I still hear their prayers. Um, you know, I, I know that that's for me. I can always come to my father and I know my children can always come to me in the same way. We can always go to our father in heaven mm, and true. we come with hallowed be thy name. But I understand the part of the question is, I think, if we're not in a right place, how do we come before God? Um, can we intercede for somebody when we ourselves are facing issues or are, are dealing with things? And, you know, James, we read it in James, right? The prayer of a righteous man availeth much. But that's what was one of the things is knowing the position that we have in Christ. He is my father. I am made the righteousness of Christ. Jesus Christ is my righteousness. Mm -hmm. That's why I put on the breastplate of righteousness because I have been made righteous. Does that mean I'm perfect? No, not not at all. That does not mean I, you know, of course there should not be any willful sin because that's, that would just be deceiving yourself. Right. We won't, we, we, you know, that's why, you know, first John Trixie is really something, you know, being in there is first John. It's like, don't be deceived. You know, he who does, he who loves, is of God. He who doesn't love is not of God, but it's all born out of love. And I think, you know, as far as my position, if there is something in my heart, God said that very clearly, you know, Hey, if you have anything in your heart that you need to repent of, then just repent and just, you know, make things right. But I'm not, I've learned not to let condemnation keep me from father because he's my father. I've learned not to let the accusation of the devil because he's the accuser of the brethren. God is not the accuser of the brethren. The devil is the accuser of the brethren. So when he comes to accuse me and say, well, you've got this issue, you've got that, you can't come before God. That's an absolute lie Mm -hmm. because I am, I've been made the righteousness of Christ because Jesus died for me Mm -hmm. and I died. Right. And I'm raised again in him. Um, But that said, you know, we don't come into the presence of God lightly. We don't come into the presence of God just, you know, well, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. No, we always come with like, Father, I'm here. I'm here. And the wonderful thing about Father God is like, you know, no matter how badly you may mess up, 
when you come to him, he comes to you with open arms, right? And he, mm. he brings you in. He puts on the coat on you, gives you the ring and puts on sandals on your feet and, 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 and uh, sacrifices the fatted calf, right? <laughs> and and there's, there's rejoicing when you come back. But whatever issues we may have, yeah, if, we have, if you have to deal with that, you know, God will show you. I think, and that's why, you know, that prayer, you know, Jesus said, pray in this way, our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins. You notice that it comes later on. The asking God for forgiveness doesn't, it's not the first thing. It's not the first thing in that prayer. The first thing is our father. And it's recognizing he's father. He's my father. He's my dad. He's not just my dad. He's our father. Our, all of us, our father. But that's the very first thing. It's recognizing who he is, that he's creator, he's God. And then later on, you know, give us what we need, Lord. Forgive us our sins. You know, that that's like, I don't know, maybe three verses down, right? But yeah, but, I, I, uh, yeah. yeah, but but Jay, it's like, who should we take side when things happen? Who would be the judge when we are facing a situation? Are we going to judge our situation, or we will have we will let God judge the situation? I, I think I think God is the only judge. Yeah, right, so God. we submit to the judgment. Mm -hmm. Whatever situation we are in, we submit to God's judgment. He judged us to be sinners. And then he judged us to be forgiven because he purchased us. Amen. So in whatever situation we are in, it's our decision to take side. On which side are we going to, to take side? No, um, we, we have a certain level of guilt and, and condemnation and all this stuff. But really, it's our decision to really stand and say, okay, I'll take into your judgment. You judge me a sinner. Now you purchase me because of Jesus. Now you Amen. made me your child. Now you made me more than conquer. Now you made me even to the point of making us priesthood. And here's one thing I'll add is that there is therefore now no condemnation. No condemnation. Yeah, no yes. condemnation. And that's kind of, and it, to be honest, you know, there have been many times where, you know, coming in to, to pray, you know, I, I feel this accusation here and accusation there. Oh, well, you haven't been doing this or you haven't been doing that. And, and that's the accuser of the brethren. Mm -hmm. But that's why I, I actually renew my mind and, and my thoughts to say, Father, okay, if there's anything in me that I need to repent of, okay, yeah, mm -hmm. I will repent. But right. I know that I'm never condemned, never right. condemned. God right. never condemns us. And there's a difference between judgment and condemnation. Judgment Correct. usually is an assessment of the truth. What is right. the decision that a judge makes? Yeah. Condemnation the, is the sentence that yeah. you're going to go here. Yeah. The judgment that I'm, I'm saying there is not the judgment that we are condemned. The judgment of what declaration God has for us. We were judged to be his children. Amen. And uh, we're judged to be royal priesthood. We are judged to be his school heir. We are, and he put the judgment, he said, by his step, that, yun din yung prinay ko sa sarili ko. I mean, it took me like two weeks to go through the, all the, the, the pain. But I said, Lord, I'm not going to sit on this pain. I know it's painful. Amen. But I cannot, I cannot stay here. I wake up, at, at, you know, at dawn, and, and I started praying, and, and uh, like yeah, groaning. And then there were times I groaned because it's painful. But that's exactly what's going to happen. It's painful. That's why we groan. And so when we intercede, it's not because we want to intercede, because we recognize that there is a need, and we have a God, and we want to put them together. Amen. And so we intercede. We don't, we don't, it's because we are righteous. We don't have a situation. We, no, that's not the point. That's just the reverse. Because the judgment that should, should not be coming from our own selves. Mm -hmm. It should be coming from what has God declared. Right. So right. if we would intercede, 
at that particular moment that we were standing in the gap between anybody, any situation and God, that's us being an intercessor, that moment. So let God be, let it be. So and if it's not there, then it's not there. But it doesn't mean that we don't we lose our love for God. We do we lose our faith in God. Uh, we, that we don't pray for our situation. We still would pray for our situation, as as Pastor Jay was saying that there are so many different kinds of prayer, and all these prayers would just pop up, like you know, just mm. come up at the time that we need them. So w- wala siyang kay bahan doon sa mag intercede. Ka parang napaka special naman yung intercession kaysa prayer faith. It this really doesn't. What made it special is because because our heart, because of our heart that's that's standing in the gap between a, a person or a situation, and 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 God. And so if we, kasi ang, ang, ang situation kasi, if we keep saying we keep assessing ourselves, then we pray. Para namang nagassist kasi ako, kasi mm-hmm. good ako, kaya ako nakapagpray. No, it that that's not the point. We've been purchased. There's nothing good in us except that God made us good because of what Jesus did on the cross. Uh, Pastor Art, is there anything else you wanted to add or say? And uh, I just yeah. I just wanted to say because I know that um I think the this Zoom call is gonna we have to end around a little bit before 8 30 because uh, there's another call that mom has. So um yeah, sorry, go ahead. That's right. I wanna give Daisy and, and Belle uh, a, a chance to to say something as well in a couple minutes. Yeah. Yeah, I want to just to <clears throat> to position myself to to intercede really. <clears throat> because there are so many issues around around the world, you no, know, here in our nation, in our country. But God cannot, you know, as uh, was what has been mentioned in the in the Bible that God's <clears throat> God's looking for in, for somebody who will intercede because Amen. God uh, God really wants to do something. God wants to express His glory. God wants to express his love. And God wants to prove that he's a loving God. And God wants to, ex- to express his glorious name, that he is El Shaddai, that he is Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Jireh. Mm-hmm. But no, God wants really, that's the, that's the joy of the Lord, to express who he is. Mm-hmm. So now we, to, to, to be able to to to. Uh, to still, uh, or, or can I, can we say to to um, not, not not encourage, but to 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 stir up stir up God to 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 glorify His name. Some He He must be able to do something to lives of of suffering people. He, that's His joy, you know, to express. Yeah. That he is a loving God. I want to do this. I want to do that. But somebody must stand in the gap. Amen. Yeah, yeah, that's why. Uh, <clears throat> I my my main focus now is God. Express your goodness. Express God, Lord. Amen. Do your will. Do God. Uh, uh, glorify your name, O Lord. That's the prayer of Jesus in John. Amen. Glorify your God wants to glorify Himself, and that's what Jesus. Uh, one purpose Jesus came to earth that he wants to glorify to glorify God. Jesus want Jesus want that the name of God be glorified through the suffering that he's going through. And and and, and this this thing that I'm building up in my heart is that uh, I really want to intercede. But uh, so now you know the issues of life, you know, of course in health, you know. But, uh, <clears throat> uh, after doing such joy to intercede, knowing that God will will hear, you not know, God will honor the the that kind of prayer, you not know, to God will really express His 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 glory to, to those uh, who are in need. I myself, I want God. How about me? So that's what I'm. Sometimes that's what I'm. Thank asking. you, Pastor. Yeah. yeah. How about me? Thank you, Pastor. Um, uh, Pastor Nora, did you want to say something? You got a, I just maybe want a minute to, or two. Yes. Yeah. I just want to say that what 
what made an impact on me is that our when we intercede for 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 others it must be heartfelt it must really come from the depths of our hearts and in 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 this we have to walk in love so because we cannot give our, of ourselves without love Amen. and so we must also feel their sufferings as though we were in their situation right. so we can pray for them really and we 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 know we know that we, we are we're confident that god will hear our prayers for them amen thank you sister nora um, daisy did you want to say something <clears throat> yes good evening um uh bless po ako dun sa ano sa topic no it's about intercession at na-remind din po ako na iba lahat tayo uh, tinawag ng Lord to stand in the gap. So yun nga po yung meaning ng intercession not stand in the gap between man and God. So yun hong uh, kung paano tayo nagpipray. So sinasama lang naman natin yung ibang tao eh. Kung paano din natin silang ipagpipray din. So yun po yung uh, isa sa kaya rin po ako nagjo-join dito. Dahil gusto ko rin magkaroon pa ng deeper understanding about uh, intercession. So, uh, mga narinig ko po about sa sinabi po ng mga kasamahan dito, eh, ano, additional ano po sa akin din yun, no, na dagdagan po yung knowledge ko. Kasi ako po kasi yung, mayroon may po kasi ako mga gift of visions, may mga dreams. So, gusto ko kasing ma- maintindihan dahil hindi ko po ano yun eh. Uh, nandun pa ako sa stage ng ano, na naghahanap na ano ba ibig sabihin nito, mga ganyan. So, mm-hmm. ano po, may mga time nga po na sabi ko siguro, dahil nga sa, nangyayari po yun during the time na nagkakaroon kami ng uh, speaking in tongues or yung praying in tongues. So, yun po yung uh, gusto ko po maging deeper pa yun. Kaya na, nakikinig po ako na... Yun, gusto ko pong uh, maging ano pa, lumawak pa po yung knowledge ko about doon. So, yun lang po. Thank you, Thank you Daisy. Um, Bell, did you want to say anything, Bell? Nakamute ka. Nakamute po. Uh-oh. Shalom, I like to everyone. And uh, actually, uh, I'm very tired, but... I I I joined because I wanted to to be part of this intercessory training. Um anyway, just to add on more to what has been discussed. Um I I remember that uh when I became a born again Christian, one of the uh things that God wanted to teach me and what uh ministry he he was pulling me into is to be in the in the ministry of prayer and intercession. So I also learned uh, that uh, intercessory the intercessors are the powerhouse is the powerhouse of any ministry. There would be no anointing that will flow without the intercessors. So intercessors play a very very important role. In the revival of the land, and uh, what else? Um, okay, diba kasi the Lord also said that, uh, command me and I will do it for you. Mm-hmm. So it is the kind of ministry, of course, there are five fold ministerial offices, but the anointing flows when there are intercessors behind the scene. Um, no pa ba? Sasya na kayo, medyo uh, tired lang. Okay. We had kasi, we had kasi a uh, training, uh, what's this? Um, uh, chaplaincy uh, training course. So we started kanina mm. and it lasted for siguro mga more than two hours, almost three hours. Um, what else? And sabi nga niya, ni, ni Lord, na di ba when we intercede, we as intercessors, Uh, of all the of all the functions or, or, or of all the uh, different ministry, yung pagiging intercessor natin, uh, it also benefits us as we benefit others. Kasi 
pag nag intercede ka, di ba He empowers you. You you mm-hmm. draw close to Him. You worship Him. You um you sing songs of praises, di ba? Ganon. And the more you pray, uh, <laughs> the more the more God empowers you with His wisdom, revelation, knowledge. Uh, he makes you future oriented isa yun sa benefit ng pagiging isang intercessor so those are the things that i've learned uh okay uh experientially so after i learned these things the lord would just put in my heart diba kasi pag bagong born again ka first love nga uh, you're so excited to be used by god so you just share you evangelize um but the Holy Spirit also gives you the, the ability to pray for others. Na sometimes, kahit limited lang yung alam mo, uh, yung, yung knowledge ba na kagaya nito, mga instructions. But then, because the Holy Spirit is there in you, uh, when we pray for others, He gives us that divine enablement and divine, uh, yung, yung what's this, a uh, uh, special burden to pray for others. So there are experiences I had since then, and even ito ngayon, yung, yung the one that you're sharing, na, it has to be heartfelt. Now, there are times that we just decree and declare. Kasi yung sinasabi sa Job uh, 22, 28, na whatsoever you decree on earth, it shall be established for you. That's one of his promises. That's one thing that we can hold on to. But there are many, many provisions in the Bible we're in. Um, when we intercede, kasi pataas ng pataas or palalim ng palalim yung level at yung, yung, yung uh, burden, yung intensity, the more we pray for others, the more uh, God moves in their lives and the more He blesses us in return. Kasi yeah. nakita ko, as an intercessor, He makes you future-oriented. He, he, yeah. he reveals to you, hindi pa nangyayari, He gives you the words of Islam. Um, so, at the sa bell, ko, yeah, yeah. I, sorry not to interrupt but I think we need to end in a minute or so because okay, okay. um, okay, uh, they're going to be yeah. cut short yeah okay so what I've experienced then is that uh, when you intercede for others uh, tapos may answered prayer healing or miracle or, or God's intervention are being manifested sa buhay nila or revival ganon um, iba yung iba yung joy na nararamdaman mo because it's the joy of the Lord Amen. and yon tapos pagka yung the enemy would like to rest back on you uh, what happens is that the Lord reveals the Holy Spirit reveals to you what will happen and then ando doon very sensitive ka yung mm-hmm. eyes mo ears mo alam mo and then you are able to cancel it because of the divine you know uh, mm-hmm. wisdom that the Lord is telling you so, napakasarap mag-intercede if it's heartfelt. Amen. Ganon. All right, well, um, mm-hmm. uh, sorry, Bill, we, we do have to close like yeah. in exactly okay, a minute. Okay. So, let me let okay. me just uh, close it up because they're going to okay. use this channel sure. for another thing. So, okay, sure. So, thank you, Father. Thank you. Uh, you know, I was glad to meet all of you. Um, let's just close just very quickly, 30 seconds because I, I think that's all the time I have left. But, Lord, thank you, Father, for everyone today. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your spirit. Thank you for your blessing. Father, I pray for your revelation and your seeing and your understanding in each one of us. Father, seal this word in our hearts and let us grow thereby. Let the seed be planted deep and let it grow and bear much fruit. Father, I thank you for each one here. I pray your blessing and your protection for Daisy, for Trixie, for Belle, for Art, for Nora, for Alan, for me, for Jeremy. Father, your blessing and your your covering for us, Father, in the name of Jesus. Amen.